Welcome back to LA Fish Guys, part five, episode 99. We're on top of a 500 gallon aquarium. Be careful here that I don't step in the tank. That wouldn't be very good. assembling an aluminum light rack that'll sit above this aquarium. All right, so these things are uh, ultimately going to go into little tracks that I'm going to mount on the wall, and they'll keep the light rack from swaying back and forth. If you recall from the previous part, we had to remove these double casters just to get this section of the light hood into the canopy. Springs on them so that there's a little bit of tension on them. And as Scott mentioned, these double casters will help guide the unit as it slides up and down. And with the new aluminum light rack assembled inside the cabinet area, you can clearly see it consists of three different sections. What we now need to do is thread all of those cables that will hold up the light rack through the various pulleys and up into the closet area so they can ultimately attach to the winch, which is what will pull them back downwards, thus lifting that aluminum light rack. And now for the next challenge, to bring all six cables together and attach them to the winch. All right, we're all down to the ladder now. So let's just take a moment and think about what it is we have to do to make this work. Clearly, um, we've got a number of cables that we got to line up. And what I did is use those eye bolts up there on the light rack so that we have some room to adjust cable length, longer, shorter. I'm going to use these things on the opposite end and essentially give me the same kind of flexibility you spin this, the outside body, and it lengthens or shortens them. So it just essentially will give me a little bit more adjustability to loosen up or remove slack as I need. There's about four of these because I've got four cables that are coming down. Now there's two other cables that are going to go in there in the center of the rack and those are actually going to attach to one of the cables that are already in there. So I'm not going to actually run six cables all the way through. I'll have four cables coming through and the two center ones are going to attach to one of the wires or one of the rope cables up above. So now what we need to do is get these things out and kind of figure out our desired length. I really hope I get it right the first time. So step number one would be to bring the four cables together, taking into consideration not only the fact that they don't bind as they pull themselves down, but is there also enough room to pull all four cables down without pulling those four cables into the winch itself? You need uh, your help. All right, so I thought I was finally out of this uh, closet, but it turned out I had to get in here and cut wires. I made up some... Uh, little adjustable cables. This end will hook onto the winch and these ones will hook onto my pulley cables and we already talked about them. They allow me to get a little bit more adjustments. So right now what I'm doing is threading another cable through here and rigging it up. Sounds a whole lot easier than it actually is because you're trying to work in that tiny little closet on top of a ladder. Tell there's not an awful lot of room to work in here. With that big crimper, or in this case, bolt cutter. And to make it more complicated, these cables, they gotta be kind of precise in length. <clears throat> All right, one down, three more to go. Slack off there. 
So what Scott has done is finished the ends of the cables, added the adjustable eye loops inside there, and then he'll bring those down and that in turn will connect to a separate cable coming off the winch itself. All right, one pair down, one to go. Um, I dropped one of those uh, little things down, oh, that one there, yeah. Thank you, Jimbo. Have you ever wanted to try keeping seahorses? At MyFishTank.com, we've designed the perfect seahorse tank. We've incorporated into the back side of our acrylic aquariums a three-in-one wet-dry trickle filter system. Water exits through the slotted surface skimmer. Water enters the first chamber and passes through sponge pre-filters. The water then rises and spills across the drip plate, which rains down over highly effective bio balls, increasing oxygen levels significantly. Water is drawn up by a submersible water pump and regulated by a ball valve allowing for the control over the water flow depending upon the species or size of seahorses. Returning water is diffused through a flexible spray bar at the tank's water surface, helping to vent carbon dioxide, decreasing gas bubble disease. Included is a light hood, light fixture, fluorescent light bulb, and an Evo Jagger submersible aquarium heater. An optional Venturi-driven protein skimmer is made specifically for these tanks and is available. This is the perfect choice for both novice and seasoned hobbyists preferring a simpler system. It's easy to set up, easy to use, no drilling, no hanging filters, and no external hoses. All acrylic materials domestic cast, all aquarium seams are chemically bonded together, and all tanks incorporate a solid top panel for added structural support. With our seahorse tank and advancements in tank ray seahorses, are you ready for a stable of aquatic steeds? Welcome back to LA Fish Guys. We've just finished the four cables coming off the aluminum light rack sitting above the top of that 500 gallon aquarium. We've brought those four cables down. We've attached them to a pair of adjustable eye loops. We're now going to attach those two eye loops to the hook, which in turn attaches to the winch itself. So now we've got all four cables here hooked to our winch. I can make adjustments on this side by turning these little guys here, and I got adjustments on the light rack. I still have one set of cables to uh, set up in the light rack, but since we're here, to uh, shine on the light rack. alive. Next thing I'm going to do obviously is make some serious adjustments. <laughs> Real serious adjustments. And that's exactly why we included those adjustable eye loops inside the system so we'd have compensation or the ability to make those adjustments. <laughs> Big fun. So I got to take out pretty much all the slack out of those back bolts there. And then I'm going to have to Let's slack out of these ones. All right, so these are our LED fixtures. Um, as you see, I've made these little brackets for them, and these will drop right into the top of the rack. Put these up here just to get an idea of how it's going to settle in. So far, so good. He said, I still have one more set of pulleys that I got to mount up here, which I'll do here in a little bit. I want to get these things in. Ooh, also need to add my extra support here. 
And so in addition to adding the aluminum L brackets to stiffen up the lighting rack, as well as hooking up the two additional cables to the pulley system, you can see the new aluminum lighting rack for the LED systems is definitely starting to come along. Here you can see one of those LED enclosures as it sits on the underside of the lighting rack itself. Keep in mind, there'll be four of these on top of that rack, which will be illuminating this big tank. We still need to go through and make some adjustments, especially to the adjustable eye loops back here on the winch, but make it a point to come on back for part six of the LED lighting retrofit to Scott's big 500 gallon aquarium. Not only is it a very impressive lighting rack, but wait until you see the system that's going to drive all the lights inside the tank. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I think I need to take a break. Um, got a little bit more work ahead, so stay tuned for the next part.